adventure tonight. This is a sled. Oh, it's no sled you see out in the snow, and this will be no ride in the park tonight. This sled will be dragged across a dirt track by some of the fiercest trucks and tractors in this country. Because tonight, the Budweiser U.S. Hot Rod Association Truck and Tractor Pull Winter Series continues. And tonight, we feature the Battle of the Monster Trucks. Hello again, everybody. I'm Ken Brew. This is my partner, Mike Dunaway, and we are smack dab on top of 40,000 pounds of dead weight. It's going to be a great night. They're going to use all 40,000 pounds that you see here tonight. And the simple reason is because the track is tremendous. The bite is great, and it's really going to put these guys to a torture test. We've got a tremendous class of four-wheel drives, Chevrolets, Fords, and a Jeep. We've got a lot of exciting action there. We have also got one of the greatest classes of tractors you've ever seen. We've got Allison, we've got triple engine V8, we've got a whole configuration of about everything you'd ever want, Ken. And we've got monsters tonight, too. Not only regular monster trucks, but again we see the tank trucks. Well, we got some great, great monster trucks tonight. We got two tanks and two rubber tires. We've got four of what I think would be the finest monsters in America, Ken. Do you know how to drive this thing, Bubba? Can you back it up and get the show on the road? No, that's not my department. All right, let's call the guy in the cannon. While he does, we can tell you that the Budweiser U.S. Hot Rod Association Truck and Tractor Pull Series, featuring the Battle of the Monster Trucks, is brought to you by Budweiser. Beachwood Age for that distinctively clean, crisp taste that makes Budweiser the king of beers. For all you do, this Bud's for you. The trucks that are qualified for the pull-off with full poles. Dusty Rose, Wildfire, Southern Bell, Baby Baby, Red Hot, and this truck, Maximum. Here's Maximum, Jerry Bergman behind the wheel. First truck tonight in the pull-off from Plymouth, Iowa. 84 Chevy, 572 cubic inches. And he will try now to go the full distance. And with the relay, it's Did, did they reweight the sled? The box is already up at the top, and they did it in a hurry. Wow, this is one of the two Chevrolets, four Fords, two Chevrolets qualifying for this pull-off. Now, that might not have looked like a great pull, but it may be good enough to win. Well, very possible, Ken, and he knew when he went to the sled that there's reweighting it. You know, it's going to be heavier. Now, does his strategy change with the reweighted sled? Oh, yes, you've got to try to get everything you're going to get you know, before that box gets to a dragging weight, while it's still in that rolling position, you know, it's coming up the ramp no matter how fast you're going. So you want that first 30 feet, you want it as quick and hard as you can charge. And that's what he did. He went with it on this kind of track with everything he had right out of the starting line. Now, I don't understand when you say you re-weighted the sled. They, like, threw, you know, a couple of thousand more pounds on it? No, not really, Ken. In this situation, the box operates through a series of gears and transmission. The further you pull it down the track, the further the box comes up the ramp, transferring it from a rolling weight to a dragging weight. Right. What they've done is gone up a gear. In other words, the box will now go up the ramp faster, transferring it from a rolling weight to a dragging weight much quicker, making it a lot harder to pull, as we just see. Well, Mike, here's an illustration of what you were talking about. In the pull-off, maximum goes 155 feet, roughly 35 feet, shorter than what he got in the first round. So you can see the difference in the weight transfer here in our first pull-off of the night. Here's Red Hot, Gary Saline. He qualified two trucks for the pull-off. This is the 87 Ford Ranger, and he went the full distance, obviously in the opening round tonight. Celine, an excellent driver, and it will be interesting now to see what he tries to do. He chose the near side of the track with Wildfire, qualified that with a full pull, and it appears that he's using the near side of the track again here in the pull-off with Red Hot. Gary Celine, as we talked about several times, is an excellent driver. I would you know, venture to put him up against about anyone. Now, Gary is one of the first four-wheel drive pullers that memory serves me right, that was using a hand throttle. A lot of the drivers for a number of years used a foot throttle. Right. Well, Gary started out using a hand throttle in his wildfire truck, and it worked well for him. We have since then seen a number of drivers convert over to hand throttle. It's a much smoother operation. You want to leave your feet free, that's for sure. Let's see what he does now. will beat the one 
155 that Maximum did, but he did not come as close to the line as he did in Wildfire in the preliminary run. Uh, if it did, in fact, beat the Maximum truck. I'm, a, I'm guessing, but I think he did. It's going to be just a matter of inches, I, and I feel like he did, too. He may have bumped it up just a touch. Gary Saline has gone to school. He's not someone that, that pulls this truck and goes and sets it down and waits for his turn again. He studies this track. He keeps the track of what's going on. This is a beautiful job. He's in the motor early out of the hole. He's getting that hole shot that we have talked about. He's trying to get all the ground speed he can get. Look at the box coming up the ramp. It is right up on top of it. You see the big green line, everything's operating. But the weight is on top of Red Hot at that point, and it's almost impossible to pull. Mike, he beat Maximum by two feet and seven inches. 157 feet and seven inches. So Celine now becomes the mark to beat in the pull-off. Raceway, Sunday at 1 Eastern, live on ESPN. Well, there you see a nice shot of the weights on the front end of these four-wheel drive trucks, and I guess that's essential when you have so much weight behind you. Maximum weight on these vehicles is 6,200 pounds. The static weight is 4,500 pounds. So the, the basic idea, make the truck weigh 4,500 pounds, and then put all of that other weight on the nose. Get it right out in front. The sled will take care of the traction on the rear tires, but you've got to be able to glue the nose of the truck into the ground to get bite on all four tires. Now you say 6,200 pounds and 45 static, does that mean there's 1,700 pounds of, of weight on the front end of that truck? Most of the pullers would like to have that much weight on the front of it. Not all of them have that, but a lot of them would love to have that. Well, here is Maybe Baby, who was a big definite in the first round tonight. Now in the pull-off, we'll try to go farther than 157 feet and 7 inches. This is Wyman Travis. Wyman and his wife, Loretta, qualifying for the... Uh, Wyman Travis in the pull-off. Hey, a nice pull. Beautiful pull. Nice Knocked pull. on the door. Got close. Well, look at here. We got ourselves a new leader. Maybe baby. 157 feet and 10 inches in Mike. You don't have to be a math wizard to know that beats the mark by three inches. So now Wyman Travis jumps to the front here in the pull-off. I think it was great. I mean, I'll tell you what, I was wrong, you know. My vintage boy looked like he was a little short, but he was three over, and that's, hey, that's a mile in this sport. That's right. So the baby baby is now the truck to beat. Well, here it is, the pride of Pocahontas, Illinois, the Southern Bell, Gerald Amon behind the wheel, and we will see if the Southern Bell can dance at the debutante ball, the pull-off underway here and the mark to beat 157 feet and 10 inches Cheryl said I deserve to win this as much trouble as I've had getting here had the brakes go out on his hauler the uh, started missing in his hauler and he has had all kinds of problems getting here this weekend he said I've got to make it worth my time I need to win this one real bad well we'll see if the Southern Bell can dance to the big dance it's got the green flag Mike, I'll say that's going to be close. It's going to be real close. You now it goes to show you the consistency of the pullers and the sled. Very fine line that separates these drivers. Anytime you've got six drivers that go on the full pull mark and then they come back, hook to the sled again with a reweighted weight, and they're all coming up within two or three feet of each other, it's very close pulling, Ken Brew. Well, there's the Southern Bell driving off, and now the measuring team will go to work to see if it equaled the leader in the poll off competition right now, maybe, maybe. Nice pull though here from the Southern Bell. Well, he does. Gerald leaves good, but watch him come to the right-hand side of the track. Actually turns the tires, readjust the truck about midstream to see if he can get some more footage out of it. It's hooked good. Everything seems to be working well. And it's down to the real critical point. He can go 157.10. You know, to tie 157.10 and a quarter to take the lead. And it's going to be real close, Ken. 
Well, not quite enough for the Southern Bell. 154 feet and three inches. Southern Bell will curtsy and move off the stage. It's Gary Saline's last kick at the dirt. Red Hot did not equal it. Maybe this 79 Ford has got it in it to take the lead here in the pull-off. Maybe. I think he might have a good shot at it. Now, interesting strategy. The wildfire in the preliminary round lined up on the near side. Right played, hand side. Played chicken with the white hand, with the white line, and won. Now, Celine has lined up on the far side of the track. Why would he do that? He has seen that the left-hand side of the track probably getting a little more packing than the right-hand side. Maybe the right-hand side of the track, there's been more pulls going down it since he qualified for this. So he'll go all the way to the left. Far side of the track, he's seen the, the packer go down through there maybe four times. He's watched all of these things, took them all into consideration. You can bet that right now, that is the place to be on this track. He's got the green flag and is at Celine's discretion. He must go 157 feet and 10 inches, and here comes the wild fire. Thinks he has done it, but we'll have to wait for the official measurement. A great pull for the wildfire. Well, as we talked about Ken Brew, that was no doubt the place to be on this track when he tightened the chain on the slip. Ever the researcher, Gary Celine, walked the track prodding ever so meticulously with his screwdriver to see exactly where the best dirt was and apparently he found it. Oh, he, he hunts this stuff. Look how quick he's going. Look how fast he's moving out of that hole. Look at the ground speed that we've talked about so many times that he is really underway. The truck is absolutely sailing down the track and the left front tire bouncing off the ground. You're seeing daylight under it. It's still enough to put him in the lead. Beautiful job with wildfire. Gary Saline needed a drive of at least 157 feet and 10 inches to tie. 160 feet like a prairie fire out of control. The wildfire has zoomed to the lead here in the pull-off. Well, there's the man of the hour, Gary Saline, who has won the pull-off with a pull of 160 feet and using interesting strategy in his preliminary run to qualify for the pull-off. You can see him lining up with the white line on the right-hand side of the track. But for the pull-off, Celine says, wait a minute, I like the left-hand side. Completely the opposite, and, and we've talked about this a number of times. He, Gary Celine, when he studies the track, he studies the condition all the way across. But here's the thing about it. Tonight, he may have seen maybe the Packer make two more packs on, on the left-hand side when he was in that pull-off. You know, the Packer may have gone down there, the blade tracker could have been over there a couple of more times. There was definitely a reason. He had it in his mind that that was the place to be, and it was when he made that ball. So the winner and new champion in the four-wheel drive is Wildfire. From Norfolk, Nebraska, the winner is Gary Saline. And what a fine job he did tonight. There's Gary, and he has to be feeling extra special tonight. He's going to get the Budweiser jacket, so he's got that to kind of strut around Norfolk, Nebraska. In. And who knows, he may be the most famous man from Norfolk. Johnny Carson may have to take a back seat, huh? We'll see. More action coming up from the Kemper Arena in Kansas City when the Budweiser US HRA Truck and Tractor Bull Championships continue in just a moment. Well, if you remember music from the mid-70s, you remember Flash Cadillac and the Continental Kids and their big hit, Hot Rod Lincoln? Well, here it is in all of its metallic glory. This has got to be, we've seen some wild things in pulling, but this has got to be the ultimate. This is a 1988 Lincoln Continental Mark 7. Yeah. Lynn Luckett drives it. It has got the power. Windows still work. Yeah. The electric trunk still work. Uh -huh. 528 cubic inches of fuel-injected Ford. 
that worked. Yeah. This is the greatest thing. This yeah, car drove was, was just almost brand new when they bought it. Yeah, but does it come with the full size spare in the trunk? It does not have the full size spare, and I've checked the the cruise control and the air conditioner are not working. They're not working. Well, that's okay. Now they're in the trunk. There's a the guy going in for the spare. Yeah, right there. And, he, and he did that. He did that. There's he couldn't find the kill switch. Lynch, shut. Shut the trunk and please don't leave the keys in there when you do it. The full interior, the headliner, the door panels, everything's there. No seats or carpet though. One seat, bucket seat for Berlin and Hot Rod Lincoln, 1988 Lincoln Continental Mark 7. Well, he's going to pull the sled. Here is the Hot Rod Lincoln. Lynn Luckett, Winker, Minnesota. This is great. I mean, this is just great. Look out. Never, ever see another wheel standing, sled pulling, Lincoln That's, got middle. You got that right. Oh my goodness. We have to look at this again. No doubt about it. Take a look at this. It's great. I mean, it's a full size. There's not any fiberglass or anything like that on it. It's just full size Lincoln Continental, wide open, front end up in the air. It looks like the Wheelie Key headed down the track, and here we go. Hot Rod Lincoln. What a great name. His lips says, I can do about anything with a sled. Look at that. Isn't that great? Back at the Kemper Arena, it is time for the 7,200-pound modified tractor class tonight. We have got a lineup deluxe. There's no bigger authority on what we have here tonight than my partner, the seemingly mythical Mike Galloway. And let's go trackside to Mike for some things that we can look for tonight. Mike? Ron Warshaw is going to be a very busy man tonight as he goes down the track. The front end will be coming up off the ground about six inches, touching maybe three times in the length of the track. Both feet will be operating the brakes to steer the vehicle. The left hand is operating the throttle, the right hand the steering wheel. It's going to be all business on Top Gun. And when it's over with, we may even see a little fire show out of the headers as he burns off some excess alcohol. And here to get the festivities underway is totally awesome. This is David Geiger, Alan Nebraska, and here he goes. Mike, you was smoking like a cheap nickel cigar on that one. Fuel-injected, alcohol-burning V12, Allison. Look, Look at the that. flames coming off of it. Man, it great? A fire show at the end of it. Looks like me trying to bake at home. Well, it, uh, it does look like it gets at home. <laughs> but one thing about it, they don't have the fire extinguisher on him here. He's just burning off some excess fuel. Let's take a look at him as he goes down the track. What they're doing, this is not actually smoke. There's a, a chalk line running down the center of the track. You mean that's chalk dust? And that's just chalk dust coming up off of the Man. track. He possibly a little bit nose heavy, Ken Bruce. He's not getting the kind of transfer he needs. He touches the ground three or four times, but I think he'd like to see the front end a little bit higher. Look at the weight box. He is up to the top of the ramp a whole lot earlier in this tractor class. They weigh 7,200 pounds. They're heavyweight. They're big horse tired machines. We're going to see that box top out real fast in this class. Mike, let's talk about the different kinds of tractors we're going to be seeing. Allison engines are very popular with these uh, tractor pullers, and a lot of these Allisons are vintage World War II machines, too. Almost every one of them are vintage World War II. But they've all, basically what we're going to see here tonight is a big change in them. Now here, for instance, is triple engine Hemi. Three Hemis, two crank to crank, one up on top with a clutch all by itself. Here's a setup with crank to crank Chevrolet. You know, that's all he's got. He's got two blown Chevrolet. Here's a man stair step Allison aircraft fuel injected motors. This guy is super tough with the river rack. Now, Allison engines were used to propel helicopters back in the, the war and also boats too, right? Fighter planes. Fighter planes. They were, they were used in the fighter planes during World War II, but they've all changed. They're all fuel injected. They're uh, some turbocharged and fuel injected. Here's a set of stair step Chevrolets. There is absolutely, Ken, no restriction on the motor. You can have one engine and run against this man with two engines or three engines or even double Allison. It is the weight bracket only. It's 7,200 pounds. It's got to add up to 72 no matter which way you slice it. Well, warming up is the Tom Cruise of tractor pulling. This is Top Gun. And I mean to tell you, this guy is all business. You know him, don't you? You know him real well, don't you, Mike? 
Ron Morskow, Top Gun 2, B-12 Allison, set on about a 45 degree angle, each one of them has got a clutch, then they go a gear drive into the drive shaft in the rear end, complicated setup, but such a sweet machine. Well, here's an illustration of what you were talking about. Two engines here. Some other tractors have one, so he obviously has to lose weight from someplace else. He has done that with a space chassis and uh, also gives up the situation of movable weight on the back. We see four weights on the back and two weights on the front, and sometimes it's a little hard to balance like that. Now look at all the, the multitude of the cages sitting between the motors. He's going to be a busy man as he goes down the track, and very seldom does he ever get the chance to read any of them. Waiting for the hook, and again, just like the four-wheel drive trucks, two hooks, one safety, one, there's the safety hook. That'll be the kill, kill switch if something doesn't go right. It'll just shut the whole thing down, but that is not what is on the mind of Ron Washcow tonight. He wants to go the full distance with the sled in tow behind him. Well, there's a good shot of the fuel tank. Both fuel lines coming, both sets coming off each motor, each individual motor. And always goes to the back to get before it ever gets power. Watch the tire speed over 100 miles an hour. Great pull, a superb pull for Ron Washcow. A little flame to burn off the excess fuel, but a superb pull, Mike. I thought it was a good pull, but he had a motor problem. The left motor did come to life. You know, it had a miss in it. We were seeing a, a hearing a backfire or a flutter in the engine. Let's take a look at these tires on this thing as it goes down the track. It's geared for 110 miles an hour wow. tire speed. Wow. Look at the growth in the tires and how hard he's spinning them oh, as man. it goes down the track. Not that kind of actual ground speed, but the tires are turning the equivalent of 110 miles an hour. Doing that with a tire that large is a feat in itself. Great camera work and a great pull by Ron Washcow. The top gun, full pull. 190 feet. He is now the... Ken Brew with Mike Galloway here from the Kemper Arena in Kansas City, a great sports show place in the Midwest. Political show place as well, if you remember 1976. You'll recall uh, the Republican National Convention, Gerald Ford receiving the nomination for presidency. Of course, uh, Gerald would like the fire in his campaign that the River Rat has in its engine. Wayne Longnecker behind the wheel. Cambridge, Iowa, his hometown, and like so many great tractor pullers, he drives with Allison engines. A pair of them. I would venture to say this is one of the absolute toughest tractors in the country. That is a full pull deluxe <laughs> with some little excess fuel burning off. Nothing to be concerned about with the flames, but. Well, I'll tell you what, he could have driven from here to Columbia, Missouri tonight. Absolutely went out, back out of the throttle, shutting the machine off, and had the momentum for the sled to ride another 10 feet or so. That was impressive, and we'll see it again, the River Rat. Watch, watch Wayne as he comes down through here. He, he's really going fast on the track. He's got a tremendous amount of ground speed. Right there, he left off of it. See the tires let off? The sled coming up and says, real close. I mean, just knocks on the back door of River Rat. This guy, a tremendous driver. Puts it away with a full pull. And will join the big show. At least three drivers now in the pull-off. Well, here's something that I do often in life. This is panic. <laughs> and Mike Novinger from Shelbyville, Missouri, will drive. And again, an Allison-propelled tractor. Single engine. Same basic setup that we just looked at before on a number of tractors. It's a single Allison alcohol injected. Again, these motors were actually designed in the late 20s, and they're still building horsepower today. They're four valves per cylinder. Count the exhaust, you're going to come up to 24.
I think what we saw there, Mike, is because you really don't have the real big horsepower, he tried to get as much accomplished early in that pull as possible because he knew by the time that box topped out, he was a dead duck. Very good observation, Ken. That's exactly right. And there you see the excess alcohol burning off the clear fuel. But it, he got everything he could and got it as early as he could. The box in this tractor class is so heavy. Take a look at this, Ken. See this tractor just now clearing. It's over halfway. It's onto the, onto the pan right now. All the weight gone onto the pan. The box getting close to the topping situation at about 150 foot. So there's a lot of weight on them and it's coming on them in a hurry. Ground view now. And he gets uh, knocked around a little bit too. He gets a little bit of a rough ride, but it's, it's a good run, I think, for a single Allison. I think it's something very competitive. Uh, might have liked to have one more weight on the front, but not much more than that. Firing the engines, what they'll be doing, putting alcohol on, on the top side. It, it, have no way of catching the field. The back motor's not running. Front two are running. Now they're going to fire the back one. Watch the little pulley right in the middle. Right in the middle on the front. Kind of, there it goes. Turning over. Kind of like a liquid jump start. That's what they're doing, Ken. And, and these things retain no fuel like a carburetor up on top. So you have to prime them. This is Earthquake. Now John, Mc, John McManus is the driver. And you can see John in the red suit. See the man with his hands over the exhaust. What he's doing is to feel if the motors are running. Actually feel the compression coming out of the engine. If you've got a weak cylinder, when you lay your hand over it, it'll drop down a little bit. The earthquake. Kind of a stair-step type of an engine alignment there. But all three, I guess, are, are, are timed in, sequenced in. Is, is that right? They end up at the same place. These aren't... At the end of the track, right? <laughs> Aren't Aries, these are just cast iron Chevrolet motors, but they're really good. The two lower motors in this stair step situation are hooked crankshaft to crankshaft. The upper motor up on top runs through a clutch and a, a gear drive situation all by itself. The bottom two into a clutch, the top one into a separate clutch, then into a transfer case and a drive shaft back to the rear end. And it makes for a wild ride and a lot of horsepower. But John McManus needs the ride of his life, a full pull, to get into the pull-off. He wakes the green flag and has it now. This is the earthquake. Great pull. Thing that out to the Actually, Mike, I think he kind of laid off it there towards the end. He saw himself drifting to the left and figured, well, I've got to go the full distance. Don't need to let it all hang out and had himself a nice pull. Well, he had a beautiful pull and he, he drifted to the left. Tried to stay off that brake. You know, you hit those brakes, the momentum goes down on it. It will really hurt you once the box is up on top of you the way it was. Take a look at this. This is a great shot of it. This is really neat the way it comes down. He's pumping that right brake, just kind of keeping things lined up a little bit as he comes down the track. See him working the, working the track. Now it's going to the left. See that right, that foot. Look at his right foot. Really hanging down on that brake. He's on it hard, but he's still going out. Outside, left off of it with a, some room to spare. The earthquake into the pull-off with a 190-foot full tilt pull-off. We have four that have gone the full 190 feet. The Earthquake, River Rat, High Flying Heavy, and the Top Gun. Ken, this tractor, the Alley Cat, joined them. This is LG Cooper, Atchison, Kansas. He's got an Allison engine too. Mikey said he found it brand new out in Los Angeles. Made for World War II, never needed in the war, sitting in a spare parts, a surplus store. He said, hey, guess what I'm looking for? Buys it brand new. There was a, just a large number of these engines after the war that were laid around in different places. And uh, several of them set up in Cosley. They were also, after the war, used in, in uh, race boats. They were used in the oil field for quite a bit. Tractor pulling found them, and now they're getting kind of scarce. The Alley Cat, LG Cooper. Here he goes. Well, the Alley Cat does not want to meow tonight. 
LG did something just then I wouldn't have thought he would be able to do with the weight of the sled. That's back off of it, set it down, make a correction, and then nail the throttle and drag it quite a bit further. Let's take a look at it. This is really something. Front end comes up. LG's got a good run for him, but he's drifting real hard to the right hand side. Well, the tires are cut to the front end of the air. See how he backs out of it, comes down, touches the ground, moves him around, and then right back on the throttle. I wouldn't have thought with the box off out on him that way. So, like the four-wheel drive trucks, the tractors go to the pull-off. Top Gun, Earthquake, River Rat, and the High Flying Heavy. Now, Mike, like the trucks, the sled has been re-weighted, so that weight comes up a little bit quicker now. Well, it was heavy when we started this class. It had a real heavy now. Had a pull-off. We're going to see that box probably at the top, 75 to 100 foot down the track. Great indication. Oh. In his first pull, Emil Geis goes the full 190 feet, and I would say he went a little more than half of that here. Yeah. And Kent had a great run. He did. There was nothing wrong that, with that run. That could still win it. You don't know. Oh, he is the first great. one out of the first one out of the shoot here in the pull-off. Let's watch the weight as it's transferred now on the sled, and it comes up much quicker. Oh, it is really, really on its way up. Now Right here, we're 50 feet out, 60 feet, something like that. Look at the weight box. Look at that Budweiser weight box coming up the ramp. And I'm telling you, this thing is heavy at 100 feet. It's topped out. And uh, high flying Hemi, that's a good pull. I think it was great all the way around, but wow, the weight box is there. They're not going to let anybody get out twice. Wow, I didn't know how close that was to reality. He went 190 his first time, and now only 118 feet and 6 inches for the high flying Hemi. They have really reweighted the sled, and the next guy that will discover that will be the man behind the wheel of River Rat, Wayne Longnecker. There's Wayne, waiting for the uh, sled to be hooked on. But he had a nice pull the first time, could have gone longer than 190, so perhaps that will come into play here, the River Rat. I think we're going to see a tremendous pull. We're going to see what kind of horsepower he builds. What work that tractor did after the top uh, of the box had come all the way up. Again, as they say, it doesn't get much better than that. Mike, it's only a guess. I would say he went about 50 feet after that box hit the top. We're going to see it again on the replay and watch the work that Longnecker does after the box pops out. Well, I think 50 feet might be a conservative estimate. Let's watch the box as it comes up. And watch the box when it hits the stops up on top. Right Move. here and Longnecker doesn't slow him down. It does not slow him down. Later on, he's getting into some soft spots in the track, and that's what shuts him down. This thing just got unbelievable horsepower, and power is the name of the game. I, I think you're right. At 50 feet was conservative. It might have been closer to 70. Of course, Mike, in the, in the, uh, the pull-off now, somebody can go 194 feet. They're not going to stop at 190 like they did in round one. The Top Gun is the next one to hook onto the sled. Ron Washkow went the full 190 in the preliminary round, and now here he is in the pull-off. Nice work by the Top Gun, but it will not come close to the 183 feet and 11 inches turned in by the River Rat. Well, let's take a look at it again. The whole shot meeting the start. Right off the starting line. Doesn't get the ground speed that I, I think that Wayne had right at the starting line. Longnecker really, you know, had a lot of ground speed. Ron Borschkow is lacking a little bit. You know, this is great ground speed compared to, but tonight you're comparing it to River Rat. He's a little short on ground speed. 145 feet and four inches for the top gun tonight. 145 and four. Well, can you feel the ground rumble? Can you feel the chair sway that you're sitting in? 
If so, it may be because backing into the sled for his crack at 183 and 11 is John McManus and the earthquake. And he did make the earthquake with his first pole tonight. John McManus loves that tractor he drives, has the three engines, the three stair-step engines that we talked about earlier, and he really knew how to make them work the first time. Now he will go after the mark set by the River Rat. Boy, that, when he goes after it, it's a good statement because he's got to go a long ways to get after it. Like 183 feet, 11 inches. The back motor has not fired at this time. He didn't fire the back engine. That, that tractor is too young to smoke like that. Did that on two motors. The, the rear engine, look at the, the pulley up on top. The rear engine, that pulley is not going around. It is not going around at all. The motor was not running when he left with the sled. He made the pull on twin engines only. Well, I can't believe that John McManus is a happy pup after that one. The tire speed, Mike, just didn't seem to be there. Well, it was, it was down. He was only on three motors. Uh, he, he didn't build for, you know, didn't, didn't run, it's only on two motors, excuse me. Didn't run but two, he was planning on three. The ground speed is not there. Tire speed somewhere around probably uh, 60 to 70 miles an hour. You'd like to see it up around the 100 plus mile an hour area. And he also hits a soft spot on the track. And it's gonna be a short night for Earthquake. Here's our winner. He did it all tonight. Wayne Longnecker and the River Rat, 183 feet and 11 inches, and what work tonight by this man in the pull-off. Super, the River Rat, the winner tonight in the 7,200-pound tractor competition. All right, now, great truck competition. Great tractor pulling. Now the battle of the monster trucks. How much in one night can we stand? Well, tracks and rubber tires, monsters, hey, it's going to be a great night. We've only begun to see competition. I don't want to talk about it anymore. Let's go down to the track because that's where it's going on right now. Back at the Kemper Arena in Kansas City, Ken Brew with Mike Galloway. We're ready for the battle of the monster trucks. We've got monster tire trucks and monster track vehicles. And in the middle of the arena, five relics ready to be destroyed and inside those relics what are called be some of the worst songs of all times they have records and tapes of some of the worst songs of all time stuffed by debbie boone rosie and the originals the monkeys jim neighbors and anything that has a disco beat to it inside the cars at center field and the first truck to get a crack at it tonight, the Black Stallion. Mike Potters behind the wheel, and that is what he's after. Mike Potters with a supercharged Ford and a beautiful, beautiful black Ford truck. He's the first man after the car. Goodbye, look out. Oh, man, he just ripped Roaring and right. He literally ripped. Michael Potters destroyed him. Ripped the hood off one of the cars, and now we'll back up and try and get another crack at some of the other options that he missed on his first pass. Well, and there's a box of, uh, as you were mentioning, disco record. I mean, everything's in there. Tavares, Johnny Taylor, Bobby Goldsboro, Bell Torbe. And as we said, any other piece of drastic plastic so deemed in Kansas City as being the worst records ever made. The local radio station did the uh, chores and picking. And as we uh, watch the Black Stallion destroy the cars and the records, they're even playing some of the music in the arena. There's some of the action. Here comes Butters with the oh. Stallion. Missed him. He missed him. Oh. Well, it... It just leaves it for someone else. And there's more to come. Oh, you better believe that. Now, Michael Potters, he, he's great at the backup. And he does a good backup wheelie. Let's see if he does one right now. There they there are. There it goes. Their history. Goodbye, Debbie Boone. Uh, it's all over with. 
I don't think any of my records are in there, are they? Oh, can I? I, I don't think don't so, put, do you? No, don't, don't put me on the spot like Thank that. Thank goodness. You know, you've, you've done some great stuff. My word. Here we go. Oh, Look out. My word. He just launched it in reverse. I think I think he just took care of Patty Page's last two albums. Look at this, Ken. Lines up, looking over his shoulder, and we are going up. Oh, man. Oh, about a story and a half, I'd say. Nicely done by the Black Stallion. Now at ground level and forward this time. Yeah. High flying. Watch it. Look at the chrome underneath it. What a great way to take a look at the underside. The hood falls off. A little Beautiful. bounce coming off. Beautiful. Those big tires. Great job, Michael Byers, Black Stallion. Now coming out on center stage is the Lone Ranger. It's not Clayton Moore behind the wheel. It's Gary Bauer from Vienna, Ohio. Now, is this close to uh, your residence, Ken? This is in the uh, northeastern part of Ohio. I, I reside in the southwestern part, but uh, all Ohio is at heart. Well, the Lone Ranger Ford Ranger body, supercharged Ford. Gary Bauer knows no mercy. Watch him. Oh, Look my at word. that. word. Jumped up. The rear tires landed first, kept the front end in the air. Danced right across the top of him. See if he'll go backwards or forward to get off. Gary Bauer will go forward because Gary Bauer, this little short wheelbase truck, yeah. he is just great. These are 77. These are even bigger tires than we saw in the first truck. These are really what you'd call the monster of the monster tires. It's a Ford cab, as you can see, part of the uh, Ford monster truck fleet. Gary's a great competitor and very, very tough on this. Lines up the rear tires. Watch him now. He'll line up and get a run at it this time. Gary Bauer puts air underneath one of them. Oh, he's backing up for a real run at it now. He gives you enough air you can walk underneath it. Uh, I wouldn't recommend that, though. Well, it's not bad until it starts down. Here he goes. <laughs> oh, look at oh. This. He has got that situation where he carries that front end, gets the rear tires up, and walks across it on the rear tires. He's got that down pretty fast. Beautiful black truck. Back up. Back up, Wheelie. Gary gives him the high sign. He's going to go for it in reverse. Crowd egging him on. And again, the records inside the cars in center field are... I think they're history by now. Re reduced now to crumble. Watch what time. Stacks of drastic plastic. No more. Watch Bauer. Oh, I like that. That's nice. Nice technique. As usual. Oh, he landed in a... The uh, information keeps pouring in from our producer director Tom Williamson that Ebony and Ivory, a big, big hit for Michael Jackson and Paul McCartney uh, several years ago, has been crushed here tonight. And here's Gary Bauer, ground level shot. Watch him come up right on top. Walks across onto the rear tires, then oh. the front end comes down. My good. Beautiful job for Gary. Boy knows how to handle the Lone Ranger. Here he goes. Oh, a rolling wheelie. Got that down great. I mean, that's beautiful. He is the only one I know that's doing that right now. He's going to kind of work the crowd a little bit. He'll back up and maybe give him just a little bit of a He'll a back up shot. and there he, there he is. Gary Bauer out of Ohio with the Lone Ranger. You notice that neck brace comes off. The full helmet comes off. There's Gary. Crowd gives him a nice hand. Gary Bauer in the Lone Ranger. Let's watch this again, Mike. And we'll watch this uh, rolling wheelie, I believe. Oh, this is great. Look, the front end stays up. The rear tire's on top of the cars. Carries them right across. Gary Bauer is great tonight. Beautiful job tonight by Gary Bauer. There he is. Mike, I'm now told that you and me against the world by Helen Reddy has been crushed here tonight. Watch out. This is the old... Old-style tank. This is an old M4. The Stormtrooper. Ricky Rodman. But yeah, but he's driving, but it's really Kenneth and Paula Ewan's truck from Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. And I might say this is the first appearance for Ricky Rodman as a driver. Kenneth and Paula, if Paula gave him the keys, huh? they told him to want exactly out. Exactly. Because we turn it with a full tank, right? This is the first time that Ricky Rodman, now he's driven the tank, no doubt. But he's never driven it like he's driving it tonight. The Storm 
trooper. Here he comes. Oh, oh, that is vicious. Doesn't look too tough. Now, this uh, particular tank vehicle was from what war? Because World was... War II. So we're going back almost 50 years with it. Exactly. Older than I am. If indeed that's even possible. The storm is backing up now and crushing the relics. Ford, new Ford Bronco body. It is a pretty... Lauren Green's records, we're told now, are being crushed inside the cars tonight. Lauren Green. Here's the storm trooper. Oh! I think he's getting a little air. Yes, he is. There's not a whole lot left to get air with. I think it's important to tell people the steering is done not with a wheel, but with actual levers. Much like a heavy piece of equipment. Uh, a lever on each side. This thing weighs about 22,000 pounds, Ken. This is heavyweight stuff. 22,000 pounds. That's a big Ford Bronco. Well, here is his competition tonight. Watch this track attack. Whoa! My. Ernie Brookins, look out. Oh, my goodness. Wheels it around. He's on the road. Oh, Brookins yes. is just He's a man on leash. He's going for it. He's a wizard. He's a sorcerer. Look at him lock the brakes up. Oh, he's going after anything in his path. They're taking cover. <laughs> he doesn't know where the brakes are. It's Ernie Brookins. It's crack attack. Ernie's toy shop. Oh, man. And right on and top of it. the crowd loves it. Look at this, kid. Lifts the body up. The crowd is going absolutely nuts. And there's Ernie. Ernie Brookin. There's Ernie just kind of laying back with him. The pride of Fargo, North Dakota, a man possessed tonight. Look at this. Look at this. I mean, he's got a lot of air. And what, now watch him turn this thing. He locks right. that one track. There it's locked. Spins this thing around just absolutely instantly. I mean, it's like the guy's got a bus to catch or something. He's going so fast. Oh, he's just destroying it. He's got one thing on his mind. Put these people on a show. Look what the track attack can do. Now, spins it around. Spins it around. Back on the throttle. Wide open. And here he comes. Ernie. Go for it, Ernie. Up in the air. Oh, man. Now, look at that. He says, I, I own this joint. Mike, we saw a show and a half tonight in the monster trucks alone. Oh, absolutely. This is a show in itself. Ernie Brookett and the track attack brings the crowd to its feet here in Kansas City tonight. Well, the Budweiser U.S. Hot Rod Truck Bowl Championships, featuring the Battle of the Monster Trucks, has been brought to you by Budweiser. Beachwood aid for that distinctively clean, crisp taste that makes Budweiser the king of beers. For all you do, this Bud's for you. Now, speaking for my partner, Mike Galloway, and our producer-director extraordinaire, Tom Williamson, this is Ken Brew, reminding you that this has been a presentation of Bud 